Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Tomb of Cleopatra The search for the lost tomb of Cleopatra has been going on for decades. It's considered the holy grail for archaeologists, especially because we know it's real and we just can't seem to find it. There are three main tombs that have never been found that experts are desperately trying to locate. There's the Tomb of Cleopatra, Last Queen of Egypt, the Tomb of Alexander the Great, and the Tomb of Genghis Khan of the Mongol Hordes. Nobody knows where they are, but we might be close to uncovering the location of Cleopatra's tomb. Archaeologist Kathleen Martinez from the University of Santo Domingo recently discovered a mysterious tunnel in Egypt. She says the tunnel could lead to the final resting place of the most famous Egyptian queen in history. The tunnel itself is no easy thing to explore. It's about 4,200 feet long and about 43 feet under the ground. Excavations have already revealed coins from the days of Alexander the Great, coins displaying the face of Queen Cleopatra and other evidence of an important burial. All of these amazing discoveries were made near the temple of Taposiris Magna, one of the potential burial places of Cleopatra. This great temple was once dedicated to the goddess Isis, but much of the area has been eaten by the waves of the Mediterranean. There is a good chance Cleopatra's tomb is already submerged, pulled into the ocean after an earthquake. Cleopatra, seventh of her name and ruler of Egypt between 51 and 30 BC, may have been buried at the end of a mysterious tunnel hidden beneath Taposiris Magna. Experts don't know how many tunnels there are or where they lead, but at the end of one of them, even if it is underwater, there could be the sarcophagus and mummified remains of Cleopatra. Number 9. Japan's Sunken Hollow Ship in 1803, a fisherman on the eastern coast of Japan dragged ashore a mysterious and unidentified sunken object, or a USO. The object was described in ancient texts as a hollow ship, about 18 feet wide and made from metal plates and panes of glass. Not understanding what they were dealing with, the Japanese chroniclers who described the discovery compared it to a giant incense burner. When the object was pulled to the shore, a hatch opened and a young and beautiful woman stepped out. The woman looked to be around 18 years old, and she was holding a small box in her hands. The fishermen who had gathered to admire this strange discovery could not recognize the language the woman spoke. She wore fabrics that the villagers had never seen, and inside the vessel were so many strange things nobody could even describe them. The Japanese had never even seen a woman that looked like that before. She had pale skin, red hair, and was completely foreign. The villagers were so scared that instead of taking the ship for themselves or interrogating the woman, they pushed her back inside the craft. They then shoved the thing back into the water. We have no idea what happened to the woman or her vessel, nor who she was. Some historians like Yanagida Kunio suggest the woman was a European. She may have arrived in Japan after a lengthy voyage in an unusual ship. However, others believe the ship was an alien craft that crashed in the water, and the woman inside was from a galaxy far, far away. Number 8. The Mystery Siberians Researchers looking at prehistoric DNA identified a group of primitive hunter-gatherers living in Siberia 10,000 years ago. According to the genetic study, the mysterious prehistoric population suddenly vanished without a trace. This group of humans was previously unknown to scientists, and so it's been made into a pretty big deal. But the study revealed something else even more shocking. Researchers were looking at the genetic remains of human bodies found in North Asia from 7,500 years ago. Not only did they find that human DNA traveled from Asia to the Americas over the Bering Land Bridge, it traveled back as well. The land bridge was so popular people were moving in both directions like ping pong balls. Scientists previously believed humans migrated in one direction, from Asia to North America. But it looks like people were moving back and forth without a care in the world. And then there comes the unexplainable population in Siberia. This mysterious group of people had unique genes and lived during the last ice age. Their sudden disappearance suggests they migrated somewhere 
or were wiped out completely under unknown circumstances. Number 7. The Plague of Athens Athens was not a good place to live in 430 BC. Nearly a third of the population was wiped out by an epidemic scientists now call the Plague of Athens. It killed tens of thousands, nearly destroying the ancient city. Historic accounts prove it happened, but even with modern technology, researchers don't know what caused the outbreak. The year before the disease began to spread, Athens and Sparta went to war. Spartan troops invaded Attica, the Athenians launched naval attacks, but there were no obvious winners. The winner that determined the conflict turned out to be the plague, breaking out in the second year of the war and killing everyone indiscriminately. Ancient historian Thucydides described the symptoms, which included fever, inflammation of the eyes, a bloody throat and tongue, wretched breath, discharges of bile, a rough cough, and violent spasms. These symptoms were almost always followed by a sudden death. He reported most people died between seven and nine days after the symptoms started. The epidemic was so bad, weakening Athens so effectively and infecting the Spartan soldiers, that the two city-states struck a truce in 421 BC. And all these years later, we still have no idea what caused the disease that ended the Golden Age of Athens. And now for number 6. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Stacy and Saxon Viking. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 6. The Lost Army of Persia In 524 BC, 50,000 men disappeared without a trace. These men were part of the army of Cambyses II, ruler of the Achaemenid Empire between 530 and 522 BC. He was the son of much more famous ruler Cyrus the Great, who founded the Persian Empire. According to ancient historian Herodotus, Cambyses sent an army to the Siwa oasis in Egypt's western desert. The point of the army was to threaten the Oracle of Amun into cooperation. This was the same oracle Alexander the Great would visit 200 years later. The same oracle who told Alexander he was the son of Zeus and destined to rule the world. But Cambyses didn't have the same luck as Alexander. Before his army ever reached the oasis, they disappeared. Legend has it they were buried in a sandstorm, and not a single one of them was ever seen again. It's such a great mystery that people have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars searching for the bones of the lost army of Persia. In September of 1983, American journalist Gary Chaffetz led an expedition sponsored by Harvard University to try and find the lost army. They searched through the desert for six months, spent over $250,000, and didn't find a single bone fragment. They did find a buried sphinx made of limestone, but no lost soldiers. Number 5. The Octavius the disappearance of the Octavius is one of the greatest mysteries of the last 300 years. The ship left London near the end of 1761. It was bound for Asia and, according to historical records, arrived safe and sound. The weather that year was unseasonably warm, and so the captain thought it would be a good idea to brave the Northwest Passage, thinking he would make it back to England much faster. At the time, no ship had ever completed the route. It was a big gamble, and one that turned out to be a hopeless dream. The Octavius entered the passage in the fall of 1762 and wasn't seen again for 13 years. In October of 1775, a whaling ship allegedly came across the Octavius floating somewhere west of Greenland. The crew of the whaling ship boarded the Octavius, discovering all 28 crew members frozen solid in blocks of ice. The captain was found in his quarters, frozen stiff with his wife and child huddled in the corner. Everyone on the boat had been frozen in place for over a decade. It was the creepiest thing they had ever seen. They got out of there as fast as they could, leaving the Octavius to its fate. That was the last time anyone ever saw the Octavius, and we still don't know what happened to it. We don't know how everyone froze solid so quickly though it almost certainly had to do with a sudden and dramatic drop in temperature. We also don't know where the ship wound up. 
Some believe it's still floating through the frigid northern waters of Arctic Canada to this very day. Number 4. What Happened to Duchess Anastasia In 1918, the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, and his entire family were executed. He was forced to abdicate the throne in March of 1917. Nicholas was taken with his wife Alexandra, their son Alexis, and their four daughters to a house in the Ural Mountains. Then, just like their trusted advisor Rasputin, they were taken down to a cellar and executed. Yet according to the historical reports, no bodies were immediately discovered. Rumors began to spread that at least one of the daughters had escaped after a botched execution attempt. The Duchess Anastasia supposedly made it out of that cellar and then fled into the wind, never to be seen again. In the 1990s, scientists used DNA evidence to identify bodies found 20 years earlier. The DNA was a match for Nicholas II, his wife Alexandra, and three of their daughters. But the bodies of their son Alexis and daughter Anastasia were never found. This reignited the theory that Anastasia had escaped. But if that's true, nobody knows. And if Anastasia did escape, there's absolutely no information about what the daughter of the Tsar did for the rest of her life. Number 3. The Lost Tomb of Achilles During the legendary Trojan War, the greatest hero of them all was the warrior Achilles. It was said in legends that Achilles was invincible, a highly skilled fighter who could not be killed or even wounded. His only weakness were his heels. His mother had dipped him into immortal waters while holding him by his ankles. All of Achilles was invincible, except for his heels, and so of course that was the death of him at the end of the Great Trojan War. In the 4th century BC, 800 years after the real conflict that inspired the epic tales of Troy and Achilles, Alexander the Great made a pilgrimage. He traveled to the tomb of Achilles to pay respects to the legendary warrior. Most people believed the legends were real and that all the stories they'd heard of the Trojan War were historic facts. However, we don't know if Achilles was a real person. We know there was a conflict at the city of Troy, but there's never been any proof of Achilles, Ajax, or the other heroes described by Homer in his book The Odyssey. Alexander wasn't the only one who visited the tomb. The Roman Emperor Julian supposedly visited the tomb in the 4th century AD, and so did the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II in the 15th century. Yet archaeologists have never been able to find the tomb. It's lost, and researchers don't even know if it ever existed to begin with. Yet all historical accounts say it was around until at least 500 years ago. If true, it would mean that Achilles was real, and his tomb could still be out there somewhere. Number 2. The Siloam Pool The Siloam Pool is considered one of the most sacred sites in Christianity, and yet the mysterious site has never been confirmed 100%. According to the Bible, it was here that Jesus healed the blind man, as explained in the Gospel of John. That makes it the site where Jesus performed what many agree was his most impressive miracle. Archaeologically speaking, the Siloam Pool was built by Byzantine Empress Eudocia around 400 AD to commemorate the miracle told in the New Testament. However, it's very likely the site wasn't built on the location of the original pool. The pool that existed during the time of Jesus wasn't found until 2004. Then, near the city of David, the remains of an ancient pool were found by construction workers repairing a water pipe near the Temple Mount. Biblical researchers are now pretty sure the newly discovered pool was the one where Jesus performed his miracle. It's a little confusing, but basically the Byzantine Empress built a pool in commemoration of Jesus' miracle, and that became an important place for Christians. But it wasn't the real pool. The real one appears to be at the southern end of the city of David, some rough steps leading down to a pool from the second temple period when Jesus was alive. And yet still, there is no way to confirm it as the one true pool where the miracle was performed. For that matter, historians can't even say for certain if Jesus ever really cured a blind man. It's all a complicated mystery. Number 1. Ancient Cold Case 700 years ago, a man became the victim of ruthless medieval violence. Scientists have called it a medieval cold case a young man killed by multiple sword blows. 
Scientists investigated his skull, finding he was struck once in the front. Then he tried to turn around and run, only to be hit twice more from behind. One strike hit his ear and the back of his neck. He fell to the ground, and the last assailant brought their sword down squarely on the man's head. This last blow resulted in immediate death. But just what did this poor fellow do to receive such cruel treatment? Scientists from the University of Insubria in Varese have been trying to figure it out. They are trying to solve a murder that took place around 1260, which is not an easy thing to do. They reconstructed the man's head, replicated the strikes, and were able to understand the physical situation surrounding his death. But the motivation has been a lot more difficult to wrap their heads around. Expert Chiara Tessi says whatever the motive was, it must have been powerful. The attacker or attackers displayed raw violence and evident overkill. They wanted this guy dead, badly, and so there must have been some kind of grudge against him. After his life ended, he was buried at the church of San Biagio. But who he was and what he did to be murdered so coldly, those are questions we may never have answers for. Thanks for watching! Do you think Cleopatra's tomb will ever be found? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and come back soon and be sure to subscribe. Bye!